Hi, everybody. My name is Jason Schneider, I'm founder of PerceptionAcademy.com, where I offer authentic NLP training and life coaching. For those of you who aren't familiar with what NLP is, it stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. And a way I like to explain it is it thinks about human beings through the metaphor of a computer. So just like a computer has hardware, we have neurology. That's the N in NLP. Just like a computer has software, we have programming that governs everything that we do. And just like computer software is programmed using computer languages, we have our own programming languages as human beings, which are which are sensory-based information. So all of the programming that, that all of your programs are coded with are coded using sensory-based information, which makes perfect sense because as a, as a software hardware system, all of the information that gets in you gets input through your senses in the first place. And so all of the programs that govern every single thing that you or anybody that you communicate with, uh, anything that you do is governed by the layering uh, and sequencing of, of the sensory-based information. And so as a neurolinguistic programmer, actually as a trainer of neurolinguistic programmers, I teach people to be able to understand how your programs work how other people's programs work so that you can get more control over your mind-body system, be able to communicate more effectively with all different types of, of people and how different people are formatted and organized for lots of different applications. Uh, primarily, for me, the most important a application of this technology is for self-actualization. And so what that means is that when you can learn about how you are programmed to drive every single behavior pattern that you have and everybody else is. And you can start to change things really, really quickly based on actually understanding and demystifying how psychology works and how spirituality works and how communication works and how leadership works and how sales works and how coaching works and how creativity works and how innovation works and how decision-making works, good decision-making and motivating yourself and and all those other cool things that you have programs for, including simple things like ordering well off of a menu or remembering where you left your car when you parked your car somewhere. Um, and and any, any human behavior, if, there's, if, if you're doing it or somebody else is doing it, there's some software driving that. And so when you can understand how that works, basically you get really, really skilled at being able to, to number one, to figure out how things work really, really well. So part of it is being able to understand how you do things well at an unconscious level so that you can start to do those things consciously. Well, at least so that you can bring them to your consciousness so that you can do them more often by choice rather than just by chance when it happens. And vice versa, when you do things really, really, really well and get you outcomes that you don't like at all, then it's really, really useful to understand how your programming is working to get you those outcomes that you don't want so that you can, again, take those unconscious programs, bring them, them to consciousness, but instead of copying and pasting them and spreading them throughout your life, you can bring them to consciousness so that you can reprogram them and put them back on autopilot. And so, and so like I was saying, one of the coolest things for me, the coolest applications for that is self-actualization, because me, when I first started learning these tools 10 years ago, and I discovered, well, I can change anything to anything in my mind-body system because the way that you link things up, it doesn't have to make any sense logically. And if you ever see someone else do something in the world and you go, that person is nuts. Like, how could they possibly do that? Like, how could that make any sense to them? It's really easy to realize that the programs that drive human beings are not logical and they don't operate logically at all that they operate psychologically, meaning that they make sense in, based on the psychologics, the internal programming of that person. Everybody's always doing the best that they can uh, based on their, their available programming in the moment. And so when, he, when I learned that I could change anything to anything, you know, for example, I lost my brother a couple of years ago. And well, it's, you know, there's many different ways of, of looking at any situation in the world, many different perceptions that you can have about that. But perhaps taking sadness or grief or, or anger and frustration and all of these emotions that a lot of people have bad relationships with and just going, I want to be happy right now. Like, it's possible to do that. There's, again, we don't work logically, we work psychologically and it's easy to glue any two things together. I've worked with clients who have fears of yogurt and ducks and all sorts of stuff that are kind of not logical for people to be afraid of and to be able to change those fears and phobias in under 10 minutes so that they have a, a different association with those things. Like 
for example, in the course that we had here last week, I ran an eight-day certification program. And, uh, and in that course, we had a woman who was scared of cockroaches, which don't have any actual, actual uh, associations, uh, no, no actual dangers, really, that a cockroach could have with someone. But when, you, when, when we, after the 10-minute conversation, she's saying to herself, like, I can't wait to see a cockroach which was a very big difference than 10 minutes ago when I had to drag her onto the, onto the stage. And so, and so realizing that you can change anything to anything inside of your mind body system. The question became for me is, well, how do I know what to change where, when, and why should I change the certain things? Cause it doesn't seem, it didn't seem authentic for me to take grief and to convert it into, into love or passion or happiness. Um, granted the, the context and the environment, and so discovering self-actualization, which is the highest and best of human potential, and being able to understand how that process works and how the programming of people who are self-actualizing, of people who are expressing excellence at such a high level, whether they're real people uh, still alive or people throughout the ages that have uh, since passed on, but we've been left behind all of these, these works and writings and readings and understandings about how those people work. That, that you get a more holistic understanding on how neurolinguistic programming works and how, how you can change people and why you can change things into other things in a way that, that's very respectful and focused on unleashing the highest and best in yourself and others as opposed to just getting people what they want or getting what you want. Because what I find a lot, I've been coaching full-time for 10 years now, and what I find a lot from, from my clients and, and from myself in my earlier stages of development is that a lot of times people want things. And one of the first questions that we ask as coaches usually is, what do you want? And, and what I found through over these, this decade of, of doing this full time is that a lot of times what people want is out of alignment with what they really need. And so, and so if I was to wave a magic wand or they rub the genie lamp and they got exactly what they asked for, it would actually lead to more pain, more suffering, and more dissatisfaction. Um, rather than being able to get them fulfillment, happiness, and to to actually be performing at their highest and best, and so and so, just in conclusion with with all this is is that so for me NLP and and I'm the I'm the president currently of the international or not the international of the, the Institute of Neurosemantics here in the United States and neurosemantics is an upgrade on NLP the field of NLP which focuses well so there's a series of upgrades. Um, mainly focusing on self-actualization, the higher levels of mind, and bringing professionalism and ethics to the field um, and standardizing it because it's such a powerful technology for influencing change in ourselves and in others. But the, the, uh, the main thing that I've realized here in, in conclusion is that, is that when we can, again, understand how, our, how self-actualization works as a process and how and, and using these powerful technologies of NLP, neurolinguistic programming, and neurosemantics to make changes in ourselves and making those changes in alignment with the highest and best understandings of how self-actualization works, that we can create some really amazing, amazing human beings in this world and, and, and make ourselves into amazing human beings. And then we can do what is, what is true leadership, which is applying the tools to ourselves first so that we can unleash our highest and best potentials and be a true leader in our community, in our, in our company, if you're an entrepreneur, in our larger organizations or, or, or communities that we work with and ultimately create self-actualizing communities, self-actualizing companies. And, and, and the big vision for me is to create a self-actualizing world full of people who are responsible for their own outcomes, for their own changes, for their own transformations, for their own lives, and who are amazing models of that for the other people around them, including their children if they're parents. So that's me in, in I hope, 10 minutes. <laughs> it's awesome. Thanks. Thanks so much, Jason. Uh, question here from uh, some great comments there um, in the chat. Um, and let's see, Miles says, how do you typically approach that? Suggesting a client's wants and needs might be out of alignment. Uh, well, part of it is, is sometimes being able to confront people. And so when I train coaches and, and, and in my NLP training program, part of it is that what I find a lot of people who come to coaching are more, it's kind of what coaching to me is a balance between being compassionate. There's my 10 minute timer. It's a, a balance between being compassionate and being, being 
what could be seen as confrontational, but, but really it's about being ruthlessly honest with people and telling them what you really see and what you really, and sharing truth. And sometimes sharing truth with people can be a difficult thing to do. And sometimes it's painful. And sometimes that pain and that difficulty is exactly what the person needs. And so some of the times, uh, I, I like to train my clients and the way that I work with my coaching clients, I usually keep about six hours of coaching clients uh, a week to stay sharp, is to be able to cultivate in yourself the ability to confront people with the truth and, and then to start with that compassion so you can create a safe space that you can tell people the truth or ask them ways, uh, ask them to discover the truth for themselves in ways that may not be easy. And sometimes it's just about explaining the difference between a need and a want and, and how to align those two things. Because one of the characteristics of self-actualizing people is that they're able to transcend dichotomies. And one of the main dichotomies uh, that I found is really important for, for people to be able to transcend is, is to transcend the, what's seemingly the difference between what you want and what you need and to see how they're both sides of the same thing and find ways of aligning those within yourself to be more congruent. I hope that answers okay. your question. That's awesome. Jason, thank you so much for just a taste of the work that you do. And of course, you know, people can find you on your, on Facebook, uh, on YouTube, on your website, perceptionacademy.com. Yeah. Yeah. And facebook.com cool. forward slash perception Academy, youtube.com forward slash perception Academy. Cool. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jason. Thank you.